Welcome to Viking Football with Bruce Barnum. It is Oregon State Week. The Vikings playing Oregon State this Saturday. And before we get started, Coach, what do you have for us? We have a surprise today. Uh, it's meet your offensive captains at Stott Field. First one will be Josh Kraft right here. Step on up. Introduce yourself, Josh. I'm Josh Kraft, a senior from Linden, Washington, receiver. You pretty much do it all for the Vikes. You've thrown it, you've run it, you've caught it, you've returned it. I'm trying to get on defense. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to hit anybody. <laughs> all right. That's Josh Kraft. We'll move on to captain number two, Darnell Adams. Darnell, tell us about yourself. Um, I'm old. I've been here for like 10 years now. Old Man River. <laughs> yeah, coach calls me Old Man River, um, but I'm ready to go. Shoot. All right. Darnell caught the touchdown pass last week against BYU. Thanks, Darnell. <laughs> Darnell has been in the Viking program now six seasons. That's what happens when you get injured a lot. All right, Coach, let's move on and talk about uh, this week's football. Well, fir first, we'll talk about BYU a little bit. A few quick takes from that football game and maybe uh, mention a few guys that, that really uh, stood out for you in terms of performance, maybe surprised you a little bit. Uh, BYU, a uh, quality football team. Uh, not, not many. We take pride in being able to move the ball and score. Not many stifle us. Uh, they're going to win a lot of games this year. But I saw some good things, Mike. Um, uh, on both sides of the ball, you know, uh, the poise of the freshman quarterback um, uh, was great. Our, our secondary, our entire defense, you know, uh, there were some guys over there playing that I never thought would play, uh, but they made a great turnaround here uh, at Portland State um, and put together a pretty darn good defensive performance. Um, Charlie, you know, obviously you have the statistics. Charlie Tumlin would pay at Federal Way. I uh, caught a few footballs, you know, uh, Darnell had a touchdown. We know what he can do. Like you said, he's been around here for 27 years. But um, overall, there's some guys that shined. Uh, I know I missed some, but uh, I'm happy uh, with our football team right now. Like I told you, we're going to win games this year. And you always talk about the physicality of the game when you play an FBS opponent. And really, I think the Vikings stood up very well on both sides of the football and actually came out of it relatively healthy, wouldn't you say? We did. A um, couple uh, nicks, uh, that's it. Um, so uh, that along with, uh, and I told you this, Mike, I, I question the toughness of our football team. I told them that. Um, but uh, when you have a new group and, you, you know, you throw them all together, but uh, this team has some grit. Uh, they didn't stop everything that was against them in that game. Um, but uh, we're, I, I like our toughness level right now. Okay. So you liked what you saw toughness-wise. What things are you looking to refine going into a game with Oregon State, another uh, formidable opponent? <laughs> Plenty to fix. Um, uh, Oregon State, I mean, it's, again, uh, we're worst underdogs than we were last week. But uh, we'll put together a plan. The guys will know what we have to do to have a chance in that football game. But um, Gary's done a great job down there. And their whole staff, I, I know I know a few of them, but I ran into him when he was at Southern Utah and the head coach of Southern Utah, and they're going to be a tough-ass team uh, that knows how to play defense um, and, and runs around. So um, the Vikes are up for another huge challenge. Now I know Oregon State is certainly going to want to refine things because they have to be disappointed uh, with a loss last week at Colorado State. Uh, probably going to come into this game a little bit angry. Uh, really ready to get a big win. Uh, what do you expect from the, the Beavers? Well, on the emotional side, yeah. I, I wish Colorado State wouldn't have poked the bear. Uh, you know, they stuck their hand in the hornet's nest. I was hoping to have just a couple on the hive. but uh, So they're fired up uh, from what I've read and a couple friends have told me. But they're a good football team, Mike. They're, they are um, everything you see in any Pac-12 Pac team. So... Um, we're going to have to go down there and weather the storm. Um, we're going to have to hang in there early, weather the storm, try to stay with them, and see where it's at in the fourth quarter. Want to get the game to the fourth quarter like the Vikings did last week at BYU. Uh, just a one-score game entering the fourth quarter. That would be, that would be where you'd want to be this Saturday. You talk about weathering the storm, and I, to me, the storm comes in the form of a running back, six foot three and about 235, Ryan Nall, and we saw what he did last year in the Civil War game against the Oregon Ducks. He comes out this year, gets a 100-yard game against Colorado State, and I'm going to guess that's what the Viking defense is going to have to key on, is that guy in the backfield. That's what everybody that plays Oregon State is going to key on. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I uh, saw Ryan in high school. Uh, we, I know his brother Jake was with us. So, uh, a hell of a football player. Um, he makes up a, a huge part of just their mentality, I think, too. Um, but and you're not going to stop him. You got to try to slow Jake not, or Jake. You got to try to slow Ryan down. So, um, anxious to have a challenge to do that uh, because again, that's going to be everybody's game plan playing Oregon State this year. Other areas or individuals on that uh, Oregon State team that have you concerned right now? Yeah, I'm more of a numbers guy. They're secondary. I love 49. He's a federal way kid. Played with Charlie. Uh, I could go through the whole the whole group. Ryan Nall, I mean, speaks for himself. Uh, I saw a tight end that's as big as a house. They're a good football team, every one of them. I'm not going to assume that. They're defensive front, uh, big athletic kids. So um, all around, uh, they're a fast football team. They're faster than BYU um, as a group, as a team. So that'll be a challenge for us. Okay, I'm going to guess this answer is going to be similar to last week, but the things that the Vikings need to do to give themselves a chance to get to the fourth quarter and maybe have a chance to get a win this week. Yeah, we have to polish some things. Like, uh, offensively, um, I saw some growing pains. You know, there, there, there was a two series there in the fourth quarter that, um, you know, I was smiling like a Cheshire cat. I thought we, had, I thought we were going to make a run. Uh, but growing pains and a hell of a defense. Um, didn't allow that to happen, so uh, polish some things uh, in all phases, you know, even defense. Defense played a heck of a football game, but they made a couple of you know, coverage bust on the, on the first touchdown, so there's things to do, um, as always, so we're going to shine that up. We started this morning uh, with practice, and again, we're going to drive down Saturday morning with a couple of breakfast sandwiches and a cup of coffee and get after him. <laughs> and that leads to my final question. Barney Ball in its element this week. The Vikings are going to get on the bus. Coach, it's a short trip. Do you have any really short movies you can put on? No. <laughs> you no know, we, we, we won't. Maybe on the way back, but going down, uh, we're leaving early. We're leaving the uh, day of the game. Uh, so uh, the state trooper is going to pick us up at some rest area on the way down to make sure we, we're not late for the football game, but um, it's too close. I'm not going to waste money going down there staying in the hotel and acting like, you know, we've arrived. Uh, so uh, it'll be different, though. I don't think any of these student athletes have done that that day of the game. I, did, I've, I have in the past. We did at Utah State a few moons ago when I was at Idaho State, and that was, a, that was good for the Idaho State Bengals um, that year. We got after Utah State and beat them, so it's doable, you know. Um, you got to think outside the box. All right. Uh, and the guys, shortest bus trip in Barney Ball history, probably by the time you arrive and tell them to get out, they're going to say, we're here already. They, they, they won't believe it. The Vikings and the Beavers. This Saturday, it's 11 a.m., an 11 a.m. start. You can see the game on the Pac-12 network. You can hear the game on Rip City Radio, and you can get all the information on Viking football at GoVikes.com.